sneak preview coming right up. Stay tuned. Hey, what's going on guys? Thanks again for joining me. This is Jason with Jadron Aquatics. Hope you guys are having a fantastic Tuesday. Or if you're watching this on Wednesday, I hope you're having a great Wednesday, Thursday, and so on and so forth. So, uh, I know you joined this video to see an update on the fish room. That's coming right up. But I wanted you guys to get a actual look of the calendar. Before, I was just kind of showing screenshots, but we've actually got the printed product here now. Um, a whole bunch of these shipped out on... Monday and a bunch more shipped out uh, yesterday. Thank you guys so much for your support. It's been awesome. I've been uh, just blown away at uh, all the people that have wanted these. It's, I find it so cool. Even if you don't even care about the fish fam, if you just like fish, you need to have this calendar. Just if you don't, just because you like fish, this is cool. There's lots of cool pictures and stuff in here, and they're they're not per, like professional pictures. Well, some of them are. Like the one that Jimmy took is professional. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. But the rest of the pictures that are in here, these are just regular everyday people like just like you and me um, that are just taking pictures of their tank or taking pictures of their fish. So it's a, a way to kind of get to know people a little bit better. So I'm not going to show you every single page because you need to buy one to find out all that. But at least you kind of get an idea of, of the calendar and how it works. We've got we, it flips up here. So we've got a nail here so you can hang this thing uh, from the wall and we'll kind of go through each month kind of fast so you guys can kind of don't don't dwell hey and don't go back and pause it and try to see what every single picture is so on and so forth yeah and then and then there was the last one December or the last one January 2019 again if you missed the uh, first video I'll put a link down below if you guys want one of these ten dollars if you're in the US $13 if you're outside of the US. Again, the cover was drawn by uh, Priscilla from Pr Priscilla MK Art. All right, so let's go downstairs and let's take a look at all the tanks and see exactly what's going on. The good, the bad, and the ugly. All right, so let's start with this tank first. So this is the 55. This is the only 55 in the entire room. For those of you who have seen previous videos, you might remember that there used to be uh, small discus in here and also uh, rams. I lost all but one discus and I lost all but one ram. So I've moved the discus into its into a 10 gallon tank because it's only about a half dollar size. So I'll grow it out in there. Then the ram I've moved to a 40 breeder. So what am I going to do with this 55 now? That's the big decision. So here's what my plans are. So I've got these uh, chocolate long fin placosmus that are in here. There's probably five or six of them. I'm gonna go ahead and put some substrate in here now. I think I wanna turn this into a breeding uh, pr for profit tank. So then the question begs to be asked, what exactly am I going to put in here? So what am I gonna put in here? So, I did a bunch of printing for Rob at Flip Aquatics, so I plan on getting uh, pretty heavily into shrimp now. So first of all, I think I wanna get some shrimp in here. Um, not sure exactly which ones at this time, something uh, pretty easy. And then um, I'll go ahead and I'll get some uh, Java moss that I've got in one of the tanks and put it in here and let it start to uh, really propagate in the tank. And then I'm gonna put some guppies in this tank. So my thought process was, which guppies do I want to put in here? I wanted to take the ones that are the most prolific. Well, the ones that I have that seem to reproduce the absolute quickest are my bluegrass. Problem is, not really a fan of the bluegrass. We'll get to the uh, the bluegrass tank in a little while so you guys can see that to me they just don't have a lot of color to them. So that's not really the one that I want to use. The next one that I have are the American Koi's. We'll also get to that one. Uh, those obviously don't look anything like Koi. I think I want to change the name of them. But they're, they're just kind of a common red. 
so I'm not really sure if that's the ones I want to use either. I've got some Spanish dancers uh, that seem to do pretty well also. That might be the one I use. I'm not really sure if you guys have any ideas or what you think I should put in here instead. Let me know. We'd uh, love to get some uh, ideas from you guys. All right, so let's move on to the next tank. All right, so this tank right here, still uh, got some tannins in it from the uh, wood releasing. In this tank, we have uh, five or six uh, panda quarries. We've got some orange liar uh, sword tails, and there's probably five or six albino uh, bristlenose placostomus that, that are in here also. And then this is kind of my, my guppy mutt tank. Whenever I end up with some guppies and I'm not exactly sure where they came from, I typically just throw them in here. There's probably five or six guppies in here maybe. This is the uh, next 20 long. This one has uh, blue coral platies in it. There's probably, there's probably eight or 10. This guy right here is not looking good at all. Have to take a look at him a little bit later. Yeah, he's not looking good at all. There are uh, red selfin Venezuela quarries, and then there's a super red uh, bristlenose placostomus that are in here also. And then I've got one super red that's more of a uh, more of a calico. He's got quite a bit of other coloring that are in him. I think these guys have spawned a few times. Or these, I think some of these platies have had fry, but I think they, uh, they're they constantly eating their fry. So I've only had a few babies from them. But the uh, quarries are doing fantastic. I think there's seven or eight in here, and there's four or five of the uh, the super reds. Here's the, the calico one that I was talking about. See, he's got a little bit dirtier color pattern than, uh, say, that guy back there in the back. Okay, this is a uh, 29 high. Um, bear with me on this one. I just cleaned this one a little while ago, so there's a ton of particles in the water. This tank right now just has three or four clown plecos and has uh, five or six uh, steribi quarries. The clown plecos you almost never see. They're just constantly hidden. Got to kind of come out here at night to get a look at them. The steribi quarries are doing fantastic. They all seem to be about full grown right now. So hoping at some point they can get these guys uh, to spawn. Can't really see much of anything else. Everything is kind of hidden at this time. Um, my plan is to, uh, I've got about probably 10 uh, blue zebras, uh, angelfish, out in the tank that I have out front that I got from uh, Michael that are all uh, getting pretty big right now. As soon as I see a couple that are uh, get, that are pairing off, I'm going to move them uh, into this tank. Okay, here's another 20 long. Uh, this has a neon sword tails in it. These guys are the scaredest fish in the world. One thing is I've got them up kind of high so they don't see me as much except when I feed them. But you can see all this stuff in the water is because they just all freaked out two seconds ago and stirred up everything in the world. As you can see them running around like crazy trying to hide. Here we have the uh, uh, last 20 gallon long red wag sword tails. We have five or six hill stream loaches. And then we also have about six or seven or more uh, pygmy quarries. There, you can see the hill stream loach there. This tank also has a tremendous amount of tannins in it also from this wood that I've got in here. The pygmy quarries like to stay hidden. Again, this is a tank up high, so they don't see me as much, so that when I do come up here, they usually freak out. There's one by himself back there in the corner. Okay, here's one of two 40 gallon breeders that I have. This one down here, I don't have any lights on it yet, but it's, it's cycled. So this has 
about a jillion uh, sunburst platies as you can see. It also has uh, orange laser uh, quarries in it and there are also long fin uh, super red uh, bristle nose in here also. These things have just had fry after fry after fry. They're extremely prolific. They, I think they, they love being in this, this tank. So there's a one of the super super red long fins. All right, this is a uh, 20 gallon high. In this one, we have black sword tails, and then we have the Adolfo uh, uh, quarries. And then also we have the, um, I think it's the L181 Placostomus. There's, I think there's three or four of these Placostomus in here. Uh, these are the ones that I got as babies. They're just, they're absolutely beautiful. There's the Adolfo. Back there in the back is another one of the uh, Costumus. Now in the tank right next door to it here is another 20 high, another 20 high. This one has uh, koi sword tails in it. We've got two females and a male. I've yet to have any fry from them, but I don't have any protection for the fry, so they may have had some and just have eaten them. Um, also what I have in here is I had a bunch of baby uh, green Dragon Placostomus that I also got with the L181s. I think I actually had 13 of them and they were doing absolutely fantastic. I saw them out all the time and then I've seen them kind of die one by one and I've seen maybe two carcasses but I haven't seen another one out yet. So two tanks side by side pretty much exact same parameters and the L181s are doing fantastic and all of a sudden these start dying off. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on with those guys. Okay, so here we are over to the 10 gallons that has all the guppies in them. The first one we have is the American Koi guppies. And again, I talked about those being a possibility to be uh, one of the uh, ones I use in the breeding for profit tank. These guys just keep on having fry like crazy. Um, but you can see they're not the most they're not the most beautiful guppies in the world. You can see some of the males that are in there. Um, they just kind of have a kind of just a standard red tail with some black in it. Again, I'd kind of think I want to change the name of them because people think koi and they expect the actual koi sp spotting that you typically see. But like I said, these guys are just very prolific. This is one of the few tanks that actually has Java moss in it. As I think I told you guys in a previous video that I got rid of all of my guppy grass. So in all my other tanks I have uh, some uh, plastic grass in them all because it's so much easier to take care of. In this, uh, in this 10 gallon we've got uh, snakeskin guppies. You can see the one of the males right there. Now they, these guys have just beautiful patterns. I absolutely love them. You'll see a couple of the uh, sunburst platies in here. There were babies in here when I switched the tank out and I never have moved those guys yet. Um, these guys are, are pretty prolific too. They, they tend to have fry quite often. I've got another tank that has a bunch of babies in it that's theirs also. So this is, this is another possibility. This might also be one that I might move over into the breeding for profit for tank. Thanks again guys for joining me for a, another fish room update. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Be sure and leave any comments that you might have below. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure and click that subscribe button so that you can get any updates of uh, videos as I release them. Thanks again guys for joining me and God bless.